Okay, so welcome back. In our last part, we went over on how to create our terrain and on how to place our rocks in our environment. And we also worked on our general composition. What we will be doing in this part is we will go ahead and finish off placing our rocks and then we'll get started by placing our buildings and also make a start at placing our foliage. If you have not watched the previous video, I just wanted to let you know that this video has been sponsored by MSI. They were kind enough to send me their Creator Z16P laptop and they basically told me to test it out and give my honest opinion. So that is what we are doing in this video. We are currently creating an environment in Unreal Engine 5 using this laptop just to test out the laptop and also just to create some cool artwork. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. Okay, so in this video we will finish off our terrain and rock placement and start working on the composition of our environment and placing our buildings. We will also start by placing a bit of our foliage. Okay, so we left off over here. I'm just going to go ahead and work a little bit more um, with my terrain. And what I'm going to do, as you can see over here, is I'm creating another mountain. Again, the same technique, going to blueprint once you have the layers turned on. And then just selecting the landmass layer. And this one is going to be a little bit bigger. So as you can see, we have this really big open space. And I just kind of like want to block off the view from that space. Because I want to make the environment feel very large. Without actually putting in a lot of work to making it large. And then these mountains are quite good. Because you can just very quickly like break up the view. Uh, but once again, these mountains, they will not be very visible. They will be something that's like laying in the background. So they are just going to be sand. Because I'm not going to go ahead and like spend a lot of effort on like the texturing. So over here, I'm just trying to kind of like have a mountain that will sort of block the view. And then later on, we will have trees and buildings and everything sitting in front of it. And then hopefully... With that together, it will look quite good. And over here, I'm just uh, normally like here, this one. This is the first time actually I think I show you this, where I simply just flip something around. You can kind of like get away with that for like further distances. But I'm basically now just like playing around with my rocks and making sure that they look cool from like a distance and that it all looks a little bit logical, which is what you can see me doing here. So I'm just trying to like close things off, stuff like that, even though it is very far away from the camera. It just feels a bit better if it goes outside of the camera view, as you can see over there. So I do sometimes like to just push my models outside of the camera view uh, in the hope that I will not move my camera later on, of course. And then it will just make everything feel a lot larger than when we actually end the models just like randomly just before the camera ends. So over here, that's looking pretty good. Now here I did make the mistake that I'm moving my actual camera. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start by placing my buildings. This environment I see more a bit of like a concept environment because it's something that just needs to look cool quite quickly. So as you can see over here, uh, the placement of the buildings is not very logical, but it will look cool on our camera. But of course, if you would imagine how they would actually walk through the buildings and all that kind of stuff, it would be a little bit more unlogical. But that does not really matter because in the end there will be a lot of trees and foliage in here as if that it has been overgrown. Uh, as if that it has been sort of abandoned, something like that. So over here you can see that I'm just playing around with my camera and I realize that my camera cannot go far enough back. So I'm just going to basically push this entire back further back. And for now I will just leave it like this because I first of all need to get my camera right. Because I want to have something on the foreground near the side and then I want to have my center building. This is a common composition technique where you have your center object but then, how, then a little part of your camera actually has something blocking it. In this case, it will be a building. I'll show you what I mean. So over here, I just want to have a building. And I kind of just want to have it like standing on like a rock. Because I quite like to have like this level. And then you get this effect. Uh, you can see that I switch my view to have a double view. You can do this by going to window, viewports, and just create another viewport. And I have this one on my second screen. And basically, I'm currently looking at that viewport while moving my buildings over here. So that is quite important because doing that will give me the option to easily move around while still keeping an eye out on my composition. Composition. So over here, you can see that I'm actually going to move this a little bit along uh, like this so that we can have our building nicely standing on it. And then I'm just basically duplicating this entire chunk because why not? Like if it works, then that is totally fine. And then over here, I'm just messing around a bit more with the stones. 
But uh, you will see soon enough that when we go into our view, that now we got something really nice because we got one building on the side, on the foreground. We got our main building, as you can see. Sorry, it's going really quickly, uh, but I will later on show you a bit more. We got our main building in the center, and then we will have another eye catcher sitting on the right side further down, which will give you almost like a golden spiral effect, if you know what it is. Now over here, these buildings, they are quite basic. I just wanted to get something in here to fill in the space. So I just had in mind to do like a T pose kind of like with these buildings, although it is a little bit too far forward. So I'm kind of like just still moving around and you will see me moving these buildings around quite a bit. Most of these buildings, I'm still just like doing small movements. It might not be as interesting, but um, with this being a timeless, it will just give me time to talk to you guys while I'm just doing this kind of stuff. So over here, this is my second view, as you can see. So my first view. And my second view, or other way around, depending on how you look at it. And these are my two focus views that I want to take screenshots for. And these screenshots will be, for example, for the thumbnail and that kind of stuff. And uh, in this case, they will also be for MSI because they were kind enough to sponsor me so that MSI can use them for a bunch of other stuff. So over here, I'm just trying to basically get the buildings in some interesting locations. And here I have some more sharper buildings. A uh, quick little secret, these buildings are actually... Uh, blockout buildings that I made way before but because they are so far away from the camera I just left them as a blockout while the main building is no longer a blockout the main building is an actual proper building you can see that it has actual lights moving around it and then stuff like that over here what I'm going to do is I actually have a different building so I know that I used this one because I thought I was going to replace it but I forgot that the scaling was different so this one is quite nice because it has like this uh, entrance for cars and everything and this is going to be our eye catcher because this one is a little bit further away from our center building. Our eyes can basically rest on it when we see it. And I'm just placing this building on a few different locations. I like to think of them as an outpost. See? So you can already see how much of an eye catcher it is. And now I'm just basically playing around with my buildings to see if I can still make it so that I can see all the way towards the back. Because it would be a shame if I place this building and I end up not being able to see it. So that's why over here, again, you see me like moving around my buildings. So all I'm doing now is composition. Luckily, I already spent a lot of time completing these buildings and, and taking them completely to final. So I don't need to do any modeling or anything. It's just about creating like a nice composition also over here and making sure that the ground is solid. Because of course, that would make sense when we have a building. Now here, once again, this is just going to be filler buildings. They're just going to be buildings that I kind of just want to place over here and I'm just trying to figure out what would be a nice placement and I decide to turn them around and it's just to like um, close off the view to that flat area over there and then along with a bunch of trees we will later on be able to not even barely be able to see the actual mountain which is what I want so over here I'm just trying to give it like a just like a little bit of space because having it just straight will look a bit boring this one over here, we end up not really seeing a lot. So I just want to be able to see like a tiny bit of like the, in the corner. It doesn't need to be anything very special. But you can see that we are starting to take shape in all of these buildings. Now, for the rest, you can see that I also sometimes like sink in a building. That kind of stuff you can only really do if you know that your camera will not get close to it. Also over here, you can see me just like adding some rocks here just in case you can see it. Even though it would not make too much sense around the back. But I know that I will never be able to actually see the back of that building. So I'm just placing these rocks because it would feel strange. If we have this entire environment and we have so many rocks. But exactly where every single building is. We will just not have any rocks. So that's why I'm just now placing a few of them here and there. Even if they are just like sitting on the ground. Like you can see here. It will just um, add some extra improvements. And now over here, I'm just basically improving the terrain. I'm just making it a little bit flatter so that it actually fits with this building. And then later on, this one is quite nice because it will just have like a few small trees around it. So it will just look nice. But uh, there's nothing too special about this. So yeah, right now, as you can see, it's mostly composition. But this is working really well. You can see that I can look all the way towards the back. But there is something interesting going on pretty much everywhere. And now just again, as I said, for shadows, I'm just closing this area off. I'm not spending a lot of time on this. I'm not making this look perfect at all. It's just so that I can have a nice closure in case my camera accidentally pans around it, but also for our shadows and everything. 
So this is starting to look pretty good. I think I'm pretty much got like the buildings down right now. So I'm adding my landscape material, which I already created. Now I'm just switching my landscape color to be like a more pinkish, uh, pinkish, <laughs> more orange color, as you can see over here. And that's pretty much all I need because I know that once I actually have the foliage in here, you will not be able to actually see that. Now I also want to mention that now we are going to start with our foliage. I got a bunch of foliage already set up because this takes like half an hour to set up. This foliage in the beginning will look very, very dark in terms of the shadows, but because we will be using fog later on, um, they will not actually stay this dark. Over here, you can see that I'm just playing around with my painting functions using the foliage painter inside of Unreal. And I make sure that my paint density is very low and you can see that I turn off a few different trees because the trees are massive and I don't really like that. And now it's just a matter and I'm doing this really sloppy. Just know that if I would have more time, but I don't have enough time right now to keep these, the video short, I would uh, spend a lot more time really precisely placing every single tree. But if you don't have the time for that, this is a great way to just very quickly fill this in, uh, which is great, for example, for a blockout or for just a concept. So that's where I'm going with this right now i'm just placing these trees in here and these trees actually do add quite a bit of heaviness to my scene because they are quite high poly and they don't really have the best optimization so this was a nice test and i did notice that the frame rate was dropping but um i'm not going to blame the laptop for that because even my desktop pc with an rtx 3090 was also dropping in frames once i do the foliage so it's actually doing it's actually holding up really well so it's really impressed um, I was a little bit worried that compared to like some older PCs that it would be running at like 6 FPS. But no, it is still rocking like a solid 30 FPS, which I'm really happy about for something like this. So over here, do be a bit careful when you place trees close to the camera. You do not want to make it that we spent all this time placing our buildings. And then you have like a piece of foliage or like a tree or something all of a sudden blocking all of the composition that you did. So you want to kind of like strategically... So keep the trees away or make the trees very small in those areas. Same over here. I'm not placing very large trees here because I know that if I all of a sudden block this entire building, uh, it is no longer an eye catcher. Then it is just another tree, which we have a lot of. Over here, what you can see me do is I actually place a manual tree because I just could not get the right size over here. So I'm just placing a nice manual tree so that I still have like a tree sitting in background because don't forget, I still have that second viewport on my other screen. So even more impressive is that I'm rendering this scene twice right now at the same time. But yeah, so basically I'm just placing this tree here because I want to get uh, like something sitting in the background, which I think will look quite nice. And then over here, I'm not too picky. This is just like background info. I'm just placing a bunch of trees so that we are kind of like blocking off the mountains so that you can only look through the mountain, through the treetops and everything. And for the rest, uh, it's quite basic. So yeah, as you can see, the trees are very, very dark right now. But again, don't worry about that. That's something that we will fix during our lighting because it is uh, distant field shadows that are causing this darkness. So yeah, over here, I'm often switching to my camera. And then now I'm going to more precisely place my trees to make sure that they fill in any gaps that look very empty. And also to make sure that they do not break my composition. So you can see here that I'm literally painting sometimes. I'm painting while I have my camera activated. And over here you can see that I'm painting stuff away. Again, it's just for like my composition. So and then sometimes you will see me often switching. Now this might seem like it is going very fast. But remember that I'm speeding this up by 2.5 times. So in reality, this uh, I actually had time to think about all of this stuff. Now what I'm doing over here is I'm deactivating my trees and I'm turning on my scrubs or my bushes, whatever you want to call it. These are nice because they will just add like a little bit of like ground foliage to our scene, which will make everything feel a little bit more realistic. And then later on, we are also going to add grass. So keep that in mind if you do this. Um, once again, work from large to small. So I started with the trees, which is large. Now I'm going to do the ground foliage and then I'm going to do the grass. And I'm just filling up the space to roughly where I think the camera will basically go. Um, for the rest, I'm not going to spend too much time. I would, just to enjoy myself, spend a little bit more time if this was an environment that I was not recording. But uh, as soon as I have a time limit, I kind of like just leave away those kind of things. Over here, you can also, once again, you can see me literally going into the camera and just painting from like a distance. 
Now with the grass, I'm just playing around with my density because I want to have my grass to be a lot more dense. I'm actually painting it right now, but I was not happy with it. So later on, I'm going to do another pass where the grass is way more dense. But uh, for now, I just wanted to get something quite quickly. And uh, let's not forget to save my scene. So over here, I'm just going to go ahead and play a little bit no more with my fog. So your exponential height fog is really powerful because if you use the volumetric fog, it will basically tone down all of the really dark shadows within your trees. So that's what I want. Because the way that I imagine it is that this is inside of a dome. Although we don't have the dome place yet. So you can imagine this dome has like sun on it. There's a lot of trees in it. So it's almost like a... I forgot the word. Like a planter. So there's like a lot of humidity and everything. And that's where the fog comes in. Right now it's also still a little bit too yellow. But I'm just playing around with the fog. I have a directional light over here. In which I play around with my intensity. Now for the rest um, in the directional light... Next to your density, also just set your uh, cascaded shadows. If you scroll down and set your cascaded shadows very far in the distance, you can make sure that it does not accidentally um, cut off the shadows at the specific point. So over here, what you can see is that I'm just going to go ahead and play around with my skylight, my directional light, and my exponential height for, and my post-process volume. Those are the only four things I need in Unreal Engine 5, thanks to Lumen, for my lighting. My skylight is using a simple cube map. So an SLS specified cube map is what my skylight is using. And I got this cube map from um, polyhaven.com, which uh, offers a lot of free HRI maps. And now at this point, I'm just moving on again with my grass and just playing around with the uh, density of it. So what I will do is I will go ahead and also uh, Paint in this grass again over the places where I feel like there's still a lot of empty space. But be a bit careful because of course with the grass being a lot more dense. Not only is it more expensive so it's harder to run. But it might also make everything too green. Which I don't want. I still want to get like a little bit of that desert. And I didn't like this area. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to place a few rocks on top of it. Which is just something quite basic as you can see over here. So I'm just placing like a few nice rocks here and there. And once that is done, the end of this chapter is pretty much here. So in the next chapter, which will be our last video, we are going to go ahead and we are going to finish off this entire environment. And I think uh, it's already starting to look really cool. So in the next chapter, you will see that everything all of a sudden comes together. So that's really nice. And over here, I'm just like quickly cleaning up this. Even though you cannot see it, it just feels a bit wrong. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do the outro and then continue to the next video. I hope to see you there. Okay, so that was it for video 2. In the next video, we will go ahead and finish off this environment and I will also give you my final thoughts on this laptop. For now, I will say that I am very impressed by the laptop. It is holding up great and even though the environment is not yet done, it is hovering at a nice 40 to 60 FPS. Now, this is actually really good because my desktop, which has a 3090 graphics card, is actually running this level when it is completed at around 40 fps so for an unoptimized level like this to run on a laptop between 40 and 60 fps is actually really really good so let's go ahead and continue to the next video where we will finish off this environment